Hello everybody and welcome to a podcast of Biblical Proportions. Special episode. Samson is hilarious Greek satire. A satire that marks the biblical text has been hiding for 2,000 years within the biblical canon in Judges 13 to 16. It is the story of the poor man's Heracles, Shimshon, Samson. It turns out that if you read aloud the Samson story in Hebrew as a script for a theater play, it morphs from a bizarrely silly tale into an outrageously funny Greek satire that parodies biblical heroes and tropes as well as Greek ones. Once read aloud this way, the spell is broken and the biblical text as it is, word for word, slides seamlessly into what we think is its original purpose. We miss the jokes because we read them out of context or in a different language but Hebrew. But read as it is, it is more Monty Python's The Life of Brian than Bible. This peak ancient Greek buffoonery was probably meant for a Hellenistic, Hebrew, Egyptian audience living leisurely in Alexandria around the 200s BCE, long before such practices became unthinkable. Let's dive in. Hi, Omri. Hi, Gil. Okay, so this is definitely weird. Yeah, okay, so first of all, we're not scholars. Our access to the vast uh, whatever treasures of uh, human knowledge about that subject is pretty limited. But but we do know that there was a thriving Jewish uh, elite and community in Alexandria. Mm-hmm. In Hellenistic times. In Hellenistic time, Alexandria w- is a city that was built to be some kind of a beacon of Hellenism inside a foreign land. It's kind of a colonial project. And they invited a lot of invited Jews. Exactly. So we do know that. Scholars also point out about the obvious tropes that are reoccurring in the Samson story that are kind of... Uh, that are influenced Referencing, by referencing. Influenced or referencing or m- making a mock of Hercules. One example just on the top of my head, we get to that later, of course, is the fact with the lion. It is known that a, a hero slaying a lion with his own bare hands is probably some kind of an ancient, ancient, ancient trope. So in the Greek version, Hercules, the son of gods, the, the most strong, the strongest person uh, in the world, a demigod, slays a lion. And in this story, slays a young lion, a pup. So it, it's also a reference, also mocking, and also kind of cathartic. We'll get to that later. And this is perfectly in line with Greek satirical plays of the time. You know, I had to research about it a little bit. There's old comedy, uh, middle comedy, new comedy. This is, as far as I could gather from what I read that scholars say about the structure and the message of Greek satire, Greek comedy, this fits in just perfectly. I have like a, I'll go with it later, but just like tons of stuff that just like are right there in the Samson Shimshon story. Yeah, so you're living in Alexandria. You are a thriving Jewish community and you have this other population that it's kind of a first class citizen Mm -hmm. as opposed to you. Of course, nobody had the Bill of Rights. It was under the Ptolemaic dynasty. Mm -hmm. Their culture certainly has supremacy over uh, Hebrew culture at the time, obviously. Yeah, of course. And the the most popular medium that we know (laughs) that came from (laughs) the Greeks and something that they were, something that they did a lot (laughs) was theater. And so comedy also. And comedy, yeah. And that experience is emotional experience. You laugh a lot. You cry sometimes. So again, we're not scholars. We, d- we didn't find like a lost scroll with a <laughs> handwritten uh, you know, note by the author that says... Uh, this is a satirical this is play. A satirical or with instructions to Samson sits here, yeah, Delilah, then curtain, whatever. Okay. No. But let's put on a glasses. Just on a glasses. You can read that story. The Samson story. Word for word. Word for word. The narrator is reading the text and you have actors doing what Greek scholars call mythological burlesque. It's exaggerated, it's silly, it's crude. Yeah, it's grotesque. Grotesque. It pokes fun at all the heroes and all the tropes of the stories, both Greek and biblical, because this is their version of that genre. It just boggles my mind that this could be, if this is true, like a pose law. <laughs> it says that without a clear indicator of the author's intent, every parody of extreme views can be mistaken by some readers for a sincere expression of the views being parodied. Yeah. This is this. 
we, what we ask of you in this episode is just put on a funny glasses. You can read it as a serious story, and then the funny parts are unintentionally funny because you think that the story is a silly, and the people who wrote that story are silly, and the audience is like, uh, let's say, very ignorant audience <laughs> who that, that doesn't recognize tropes or plot twist or uh, how a play should uh, be seen or comedies doesn't really understand or look at it as uh, something that was intended to be written and be read to retain the attention of a well-fed elite who want to tell their story and they sit in Alexandria they uh, they don't take the real the religion that seriously like people do today No Alexandrian Jews that we know of, and there are letters, like hundreds of letters, I looked it up, has a Hebrew name, David, Moshe, Abraham. You have Hellenistic names. Only yeah. much later, yeah. you have all those Hebrew names. So in that time, like 300 years, whatever it is, in the Alexandria, Hellenistic Alexandria, they are happily yeah. Hellenized. They're doing great. This yeah. is the best yeah. Hebrew Jewish community, whatever. Like in the world at that time, and maybe you could argue maybe the most thriving <laughs> until the American Jews. Yeah. So maybe they walk in the streets of Alexandria and they go to parties and they go to meetings and they hear about that play that they saw, uh, that uh, the Greek hero did that and did that. So they wanted to their own version, like uh, the American Jews. When it, it comes, when Christmas time comes, then uh, they want uh, also. So they they made Hanukkah this kind of a Christmas adjacent, yes. adjacent, adjacent. And in Israel, it's not really adjacent. Like that. And they give presents every day, eight days, because mm. they have to compete with yeah, Christmas. With I learned yeah. this, oh, this because here, you know, you get a book, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> for you Hanukkah. get like a cho- chocolate yeah, coin. Chocolate That's co- what you get. <laughs> chocolate yeah. co- this is not. We don't give gifts really. Yeah. Or maybe you get from your boss. You know, if you work in an office, you get like a hundred. Like we a don't have this something. quote. Un- uh, we don't have this uh, quote uh, unquote first class citizenry like the American Jews feel towards the Christians when they see the Christmas parties and the Christmas when the children the, the children, children yeah, see all the presents the Christmas <laughs> atmosphere it's really intoxicating wow. even us yes. uh, I live in Jaffa and there's a lot of Christian community there and they adore their uh, adorn adorn their houses with the wow, Christmas awesome. uh, stuff yeah. and I feel the Christmas spirit as well for us it feels this would be very strange for Christian uh, listeners it feels subversive if you go to a church and Here in Israel, if I will yeah. go to a church in Christmas, this is wow, yeah, super cool and astro- yeah. an- anthropological yeah. experience mm. because this is our context mm-hmm. and if you look at it and we will look at it, we will see the the divisions in the um, acts, yes, we'll see the construction, yes, so the craft here wow. is for us, it looks much more advanced, let's say than the Joseph stories mm-hmm. who were advanced in themselves. I've read this aloud. And read back yeah. to me with my sister with friends maybe there are four or five words that yeah. we need the translation everything is yeah. super clear this is this is new Hebrew you know compare yeah, 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 yeah. let's set up the acts and see the comedy there just I would say this <laughs> it's either a supremely well-crafted comedy that hits all the beats of comedy and just I cried laughing my friends cried laughing super funny or somehow mistakenly someone meant to write a serious biblical tale as it is in the time where people are doing satirical plays and somehow even though the intent was to make it serious if you just read it in a different tone it's somehow you Is perfectly funny I that can happen as well yeah but I, uh, no I don't think so it's just hard to believe that someone like could someone be so is. good as an idiot and all the silliness of the Bible is so condensed and just like so well crafted the language and the wording that somehow it's like you're supposed to look at it a different I don't know it's like a, it's either it's Monty Python or it's either the room by uh, Tommy whatever his name that it is such a bad movie that it became a cult movie and people yeah. enjoy it because it's so silly I don't think it's, so. not, I, no, it's, it's a possibility it. the human genius <gasps> and the human stupidity no. is endless you know it's like chiseled yeah it's, 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 it's just perfect yeah I'm with you I'm uh, okay 
So we are now in Judges 13, Shoftim Yud Gimel, for our Hebrew reading audience. So let's start with the first scene, the birth of Samson. This is again, as far as I can understand it, along the lines of uh, Greek comedy, the first act mm-hmm. is like the origin story. Mm-hmm. So just imagine the context. The Greeks, the Hellenists, they have all these very elaborate and long origin stories about this hero that was born out of this and yeah. out of that. The seed that th- hit the ground on this uh, December, Wednesday, noon, whatever. And yeah. his mother really hated him yeah. and this, she did that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Here, yeah. how, do the sto- <laughs> how did the stories of the Hebrews start? It was a man from Soa. His name was Manoach and his wife was barren and didn't have kids. Yeah. So this is like, haha. These are, these are our stories. You can actually act it a different way. A friend of mine, shout out Ohad, he acted it a different way. That when you present him in Manoach, this is Noach. Mm-hmm. Okay, he's just like stupid. Yeah. And then when, she, when, uh, when it says that she's barren, maybe he's trying to put his arms around her and she's like, uh, yeah. moves around yeah. because this works better for the, <laughs> yeah. for the rest of the scene. Because basically what happens is both times, she's barren, doesn't have kids. A strange man yeah. comes to her house when her husband is not there. Yeah. And then she goes to him, and you can imagine her hair messed yeah. up. And she's like, a strange man came over, now I'm pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> Twice he comes yeah. when her husband is not there. <laughs> yeah. so, so put on the, silly, the, put on the <laughs> com- comedy glasses, and it's like an opening scene that tells the people, have a good laugh. And w- at our own expense. At our own expense, yeah. They see a trope. And it, you can read it like in a serious note. And then there was a man named Manoach and his wife was barren. Yeah. But if you put on the funny glasses, it's, fu- it's a funny scene. It's, yes. it's like t- telling the audience, this is a funny story. Relax. Yes. You're here to entertain. Yes. We know this. We know this. Yeah. A man with a barren woman. Come on. These are all our stories in Bereshit. In Genesis, they all had barren wives. Four barren wives. You know, Leah was half barren yeah. some of the time. So this is like, ha, ha, ha. We know this. We know this. Yeah. Okay. Okay, there's another comedic element here that the messenger, Isha Elohim, this mm-hmm. is a reference to Jacob, Isha yeah. Elohim, the Ish of uh, God, Fought whatever. Jacob, yeah, yeah. yeah for Jacob. So he tells her, there are rules that you have to remember that are very, very important. He gives her all the rules, one of yeah. them that you should never uh, cut, his hair. cut his hair. Because he's supposed to be a Nazir, which is a monk. It's a, something that is in uh, Leviticus, that the uh, monks who are holy then regular or whatever, they're not supposed to cut their hair. We don't have that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> and then when she goes to her husband and she relays the rules, oops, she omits yeah. the most important rule. And then the messenger of God, he himself omits it. Yeah. So like the audience is like, oh, because yeah. they know the story. Yeah. They already, they've seen it, they've seen it already. Yeah. I've seen, like the way I imagine it, this, is be, this was very successful. It's very well, re- very well received. And then also it's comedic how the husband says, uh, God, can you please uh, send that uh, yeah. messenger uh, over again? Yeah. I want to ask him what uh, should we do. This is also comedic. Later, the man of God says you should uh, put a, an offering to Yahweh and then they do an offering. And, that's and he didn't know that he was a messenger of Yahweh. There was he, a blaze. He just told, but he just told you, yeah. <laughs> give the offering to Yahweh. And he didn't know he was a... No. So here, <laughs> yeah, but here there's some kind of a mini... You can say that it's a kind of a mini structure that will be exposed later. That uh, there's a comedy, 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 and a cathartic event. So they were barren, haha, like the old story, you know, yeah, 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 okay, okay. The man of God came and. Oh, I hope she's pregnant. And oops, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we know. What it is, but <laughs> ah, no, they made an offering and there's a fire. Ah, so there's like an action scene. Yes. Ah, there is. Yeah, yeah, it's a very big scene. Here, you know. Scholars will determine it, but I think like they see the face of God and then Manoach, the husband, he says, oh, no, now we will die because we've seen the, fa- the face of God. I think this is a jab at uh, Exodus where you, you, yeah. uh, you cannot see the face of God because his wife then tells him, hey, think yeah. about it for a moment. Yeah. <laughs> Why would Yahweh accept our offering if he wanted to kill us? And, ha- and then it says, how come we hear all this? Yeah. And the translation is not clear. I, it might be we're hearing... Every, like the play <laughs> like we're hearing like <laughs> this, <laughs> we're here yeah. okay so why would we hear the booming voice of the narrator and see the crowd laughing yeah. no this doesn't make sense and just imagine them as like a funny characters in a play 
So there's the wife and there's Manoach, which is, is the name is very similar to Noach, but with comfortable, an M, comfortable. comfortable. But when yeah. you add a mem, it became deceased. So <laughs> Noach. Right, deceased. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> but also like Menucha, like yeah, rest. rest. Yeah. So imagine that it's like a exposition to a play, a curtain, two characters. They converse with each other. They have like. dialogue before the main uh, characters that you all uh, applaud when uh, yes. they arrive when you put on the the comedy glasses it fits it's wow. like the, they they have a conflict somebody comes performs a miracle and they converse between themselves it's kind of funny because the husband doesn't know maybe uh, she cheated on him and blah 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 So Maybe yeah, does, did you want to have sex with him? This is what I said at the beginning. Yeah, she yeah, puts yeah. The, uh, yeah. His arm around and her she, and she's yeah. like, uh, she goes she, away. Yeah. She's barren. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's not barren. <laughs> she's not barren. His penis is Manoah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, because they had, be, they had their penises out a lot in, this, uh, in these kinds of plays. Yeah. It's what, it was a thing. And yeah. Shimshon will have his penis out uh, yeah. by the end. So maybe that was it. Mm. Like uh, not their uh, actual penises, but just like a, uh, like a prop, a penis prop. Right. Okay, so then it ends, this scene ends when he's born. Uh, this is another clue that this is not a biblical text because it doesn't say uh, where Shimshon's name is derived from. Yeah. I think only like two characters of the whole yeah. Bible don't yeah. have an origin for the name. This is very, 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 very suspicious. And his name is Shimshon, which is obvious... That is kind of some kind of shout out to Shemesh. So sun, the sun, sun God. Yeah. If you consider that they live in uh, Alexandria and the most popular Egyptian God there is the sun God and it's like a sun something, then it fits. But also it's like a reference to the place where he was, he was roaming, which is Beit Shemesh, house of the sun. And as we said many times in this uh, podcast, when you say house, when you say bait, it usually, and we'll get to that later in this story, mm-hmm. it usually means the house of worship. Like Beit Shemesh means like the place where there was some kind of a worship yes. to not necessarily the sun, God, but the sun. Yes. And then around it, probably slowly, but surely yeah, the yeah. town was, yeah. was created. Yeah. And everybody knows. Delilah. Delilah. Yeah. In Hebrew, th- we say Delilah or Delilah, but it's only the pron- pronunciation. When you read it the and pr- when you say it in pr- English. The, the punctuation you said it came a thousand years yeah, later. Yeah. Punctuation is much, much later. If you read it as the English-speaking people who read it, Delilah, then in Aramaic, <laughs> it means of the night or from the night. Mm-hmm. So and she's his foil. And she's his kryptonite. Boom. <laughs> Sunlight. <laughs> yeah. And then it's also, this ends like uh, very grandly. It's like the spirit of Yahweh now is beating in his heart. Yeah. It's like it's super grand. And see. Okay, so now we're at the next chapter. 14. Mm-hmm. It's funny for several reasons. First of all, it's just, again, just like lampoons, yeah. the generic uh, stories. Yeah. Ha- so the Greeks, the Hellenists, they have all these grand stories of love and marriage and how it happens. They, okay, let's see how our marriages uh, happen. Shemeshon goes down. There's always a lot of, there's a lot of moving in the, yeah. in the text. Because by Shemesh and stuff, it's on the hills. The Israelites are hill people. And the enemies here, the Philistines, yes. we'll get to that later, they live on. On the coast. On the coast. Yeah. Which is down. But it also works perfectly as a, as a play because they go up, down, into the sides. All the time yeah. moving. Up, 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 down. Yeah. Just imagine the moving all around. So Shibshot goes down to Timna. He sees a woman, a, a Philistine woman. How do our love stories start? He goes back to his dad and mom. I w- I see, I've seen a woman. I want to marry her. Yeah. But this is intentionally silly. Yeah. It's not unintentionally and silly. And he wants to marry the, her. The, because the, re- sorry, sorry, the reason that it's funny is because a lot of people have been... have been being unintentionally funny in this book. Yeah. So let's just like... Own just it. <laughs> own it and just go, you know, a, a bit further. Yeah. A bit further. And also there's some kind of uh, foreshadowing here because he f- wants to marry her, Samson, because she... <laughs> she's she, honest. She's honest. The, <laughs> the word in Hebrew <laughs> is... She's... He yeshara be'enav. She's straight. Like, literally, yeshara means straight. Yeah. But it's also like very honest. And uh, it's uh, foreshadowing <laughs> because uh, she's Philistine and she's foreign. And let's 
and she's not honest. She's gonna. She, yeah, we, and we, she's uh, on, on, not honest. She's and it's opposite. a reoccurring scene with this character <laughs> to find an un- unhonest uh, women and fall in love with. And them. also, it's very weird that you would say about a woman in the Bible that she's honest in my eyes. No, the reason that she yeah. sa- that he says she's honest is because she, you know, she probably had like a mask of the character of the lying woman. Something of the sort. It's yeah. supposed to be. Or maybe ludicrous. she does faces as he, as the storyteller says that uh, she looked uh, straight in his eyes. And that wording, yeshara be'enav, yashar be'enav. Yashar it's the masculine form of yashar yeshara. It's feminine. Yashar masculine. It's a, a wording that is used uh, for deities. It's like uh, x asa hayashar be'enei. Yahweh yes. did straight in the eyes of Yahweh. That is the wording. So no, it's very, yeah, it's very like with a lot of pathos and, and it's, it's associated with, uh, with Yahweh. Yeah, so when a woman to this hero looks... Who is a liar. Is a, we know that she's a liar. Looks straight, quote unquote, to him. <laughs> so he's stupid. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's, it's a place when you're supposed to laugh. Yes. Please laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Please clap. Please clap. <laughs> Here... There's again like a jab, a reference, what, a reference maybe. Yeah. This is not a jab to the, all the Genesis stories where they can't marry local and the parents are very, uh, you know, worried. Yeah. Uh, Rivka says, nah, if uh, Yaakov yeah. uh, will marry a local, I want to die. And let's contemplate on that sp- uh, particular scene. Uh, it's not only a reference to, yeah, Isaac and Rivka that are sad because uh, Esau, blah, blah, blah. Let's imagine that the, it was written, as we say, in uh, Alexandria in that uh, time and place. The fact that it's Philistines, they are the enemy here. It's mm-hmm. also mm-hmm. kind mm-hmm. of a mm-hmm. jab. Yeah. Because the Philist- the yeah, Philistines are the Greeks. It is said, even in the Bible itself, they come from Kaftor, Kaftor, uh, Crete. Yeah, archaeologists say yeah. Uh, genetic. Yeah, uh, yeah. Also it is known. It is, is known. known. And if they so they don't say we're against the Greeks. Now we're against the a little bit Greek, the Greekish. We're against the Greeks that were in our land uh, back then, before there was you are Greeks, uh, whatever you your your heads yeah. are up here, you know, you're with your place. The yeah, we the defeated you back then with our hero. Mm. And there's also like a mindset for immigrants or minorities of not mixing just to. To f- to retain their culture. Yeah, to retain the culture and their power, you know, their unity, their solidarity. You, know, you don't want the majority people come and then, you know, change whatever in your... Yeah. You are yeah. you, it's, your, yeah. it's your community. Yeah, and you want to take what you like and not take what you don't like. In Israel, a lot of secular uh, people have no, have no problem marrying a non-Jewish girl. I imagine that even secular atheists... Who li- Jewish secular atheists who don't live in Israel have more problems yes. marrying with non-Jewish girls just because of that mindset. Even though they're probably atheists and maybe they will find the right woman and she will be a Goya and they will say, fuck it. But the mindset is yes. there. There are more obstacles. Yeah. So there's some kind of a burlesque, mythological burlesque here. Definitely. Stupid people making stupid decisions. <laughs> And a cautionary tale, and uh, then the catharsis will get to that. Okay, so we're still at the uh, Judges uh, 14. So j- just to show how in the translation, in some parts, you can see the humor, and in some parts, eh, 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 mistranslation. Okay, so he says to his father after he's, after he's seen the young Philistine woman, I have seen a Philistine woman in Timna, now get her for me as my wife. Yeah. <laughs> this is a bit funny. Yeah. And when he says, Yesharab and I, she's honest in my eyes, she's good in my eyes. Mm, the NIV, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the NIV uh, translation. I'm not even trying the yeah. King James version yeah. for this one because whatever. So he says that she's the right one for me. No, 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 no. You just, you missed the joke. Yeah, you missed the joke. I, I, whatever, I'm not uh, blaming them. But Maybe there are know. parents in the audience who they see that scene and like, yeah, yeah, well, our children, they want to marry those hot uh, Greek, Hellenic, uh, uh, Alexandrian uh, women <laughs> with their togas and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's like, uh, you see Samson? You see Samson? <laughs> they, nod, they nudge their uh, yeah. children in the audience. Yeah. You see that? You can make fun of uh, Hercules. You can make fun of the Bible. We've seen that. Yeah. You can't make fun of Yahweh of God. And you ma- can't make fun in the Greek place of Zeus and Athena. Yeah. As far as I could tell, 
they're like they are out of bounds. Yeah, so there here, are places you don't you don't want to go. Yes. You don't don't go there. Don't go there. So after all that, you know, they say, oh, Avi Vimo lo yadu ki mi Yahwehi ki to anar me vakesh mi plishtim u ba'et ha'i plishtim moshlim Israel. This is the plan of yeah. Yahweh. He's looking for a reason to fight the Philistines because the Philistines rule in Israel. And I think this is the line. Mm. This is the line that made this story part of the judges and of the books mm. because. The judges is folk heroes yeah. who live under foreign rule. Yeah. And here it says this, so they added, ah, oh, we didn't mention. We skipped the first verse of, uh, of chapter 30 because this is like the template of all of the stories in the judges book. Mm-hmm. Again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord of, or, or Yahweh, mm-hmm. and uh, Yahweh delivered them into the hands of the Philistines for 40 years. So mm-hmm. this is just like the addition template, and also there are later additions it say that he judged Israel for 20 years. So we just ignored uh, those. Yeah, yeah. It was Yahweh that was in charge yeah. of Samson falling in love with a Philistine woman. Yeah. Woman. That's what we're talking about. And it's also kind of a Greek thing to me because Yahweh works here like some kind of a Greek prophecy. He lets events play out because Samson has fate to fight against the Philistines. So it doesn't matter if he does something, quote unquote, not good because it's part of God's yes. plan. So here Yahweh works kind of like in a Greek manner. In a, the, the mindset here is a belief in fatalism. It's a, it's a Greek thing to do. We see that, that in their plays. Uh, what does that mean? For example, there's a prophecy for a king that his son is supposed to kill him. So oh, good they, premise, good premise. Yeah, so this is like it's going to happen it's the fate it's your fate it's fatalism it's going to happen yes. but that king now that he knows it's going to happen wants to change the outcome so he be- thinks he kills his son he banishes him throw him in the desert or whatever yeah. and then yeah, he says yeah at least this part of the prophecy won't be uh, <laughs> manifested but then that child grows up to become Oedipus and then uh, some random encounter yeah. kills his father and marries yeah. him so it's kind of here. It, it yeah. All the randomness that will follow yeah. is the plan of Yahweh. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so here after that, this is again, this is Hercules, Heracles. Mm-hmm. He goes down. He doesn't kill a lion, but a baby cub. Yeah. As it says, Omri, very grandly, that they go down to the place and then there's a lion cub roaring towards him. And it's, and it's, it's super ludicrous. But it's like, Halav Ruach Yahweh, and it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, and he slayed the lion as if it was a lamb with nothing in his hand. Just imagine yeah. on, the, on, on, the, on the stage, it says that, the narrator, then he walks, and there's like a little uh, furry doll of like a cat. <laughs> and, just a, and he just uh, kicks the yeah. cat, and he's like, wow! <laughs> this is like, I, ah, perfect. Yeah, yeah. The huge gap between yeah. the biblical narrator that yeah. says that he did this and that, and what he actually just like, kicked the cat yeah. or something. <laughs> It could also be that he's doing something grand with a silly little cub, and that's like, why would you put a cub yeah. in it? If a it's young a lion. lion. A yeah. young lion. Yeah. Why, why not? not a regular lion? Yeah, yeah. or a big lion. Why not <laughs> the, put a big the lion? Biggest lion? The biggest lion. And there was, since that day, there wasn't any big. There weren't any big <laughs> lions in the land anymore. Because this is a, this story is exactly the kind of story that if were written seriously, because we don't see all exaggerations when he hits a thousand Philistines with, and he does like incredible stuff. So they exaggerate the prowess when it's comedic and they downplay the prowess when it's comedic. It's just like all, it's always perfect on the beats of the humor. Yeah. So then again, he goes, speaks to the wife, speaks to the woman. She's again honest <laughs> in, his eyes, in, his, in his eyes. And then there's the, 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 the whatever. He doesn't tell anybody that he killed the lion, that he found uh, honey in it. This is to be referenced uh, later. Yeah. Next scene, they have a feast for a marriage. He's supposed to not drink wine. That's one yeah. of the things that he was told. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 uh. You're breaking and the law. Yeah, <laughs> and not to eat uh, unholy stuff like uh, honey that grew out of the lion's mouth. Which, yeah. which, he, which he just did yes. right now. So this is kind of a setup slash foreshadowing. The audience like knows. And probably if it was a play and uh, there was a narrator who oversaw the uh, actor's actions, and uh, then uh, maybe that uh, the audience like, oh, don't, don't eat the, the honey, don't give them the honey. Yeah. Because it mentions that he doesn't tell his parents. He doesn't yeah. tell his parents. He doesn't tell his parents. 
Okay, so here, this is hilarious. This is hilarious. Yeah. It makes fun of the timing problems. Notorious timing problems of the Bible. Something three days, then it was five days, and it's unclear, and it's unintentionally funny. Yeah. If you just like pour over it, and we haven't mentioned it. Those people at that time, Alexandria, 200 BCE, those are the same people that wrote a bunch of mm -hmm. biblical books that have not been accepted into the Hebrew canon, yeah. but appear in the Christian mm -hmm. canon. And they did the Septuagint. Yeah. So they pour over every word, they yeah. translate, they translate. What? They don't go after that yeah. and drink something and say, <laughs> and, and poke fun yeah. at their stories? Maybe Why? when they go to their nine to five job, that asshole uh, Greek person always uh, laughs at their mythology, that <laughs> mythology that uh, the timeline there is also uh, is very incoherent yes. and uh, it contradicts itself. Because you can't change it. Okay, yeah. so here he, there's a feast and then he has this silly little riddle for them and the stakes are also super silly yeah. like super generic like yeah. sheets yeah. bed sheets and, and suits whatever yeah. clothes okay and the riddle is silly but it's beautiful also mm -hmm. we still use mm -hmm. from the eater will come food but yeah. it's the same root yeah. and from something strong will come, come something sweet sweet yeah this is the the lion so yeah. are they supposed to to know <laughs> he <laughs> killed the lion then there were bees in it no they can't know this riddle this is you know cheating slash stupid how many times there's riddles in the bible <laughs> i don't know I and don't how know. many times there are riddles in greek mythology Ooh. for example we talked about oedipus also there there's riddles mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah. it's again yeah and this is scholars say that they, like i I just had to, you know, go on a search engine and find uh, what scholars say about this story. They yes. say that all these are references to mm -hmm. Achilles, mm -hmm. uh, to Samson, no, to sorry, Achilles. Heracles, but also Achilles because of his hair. I yeah. think I don't know if scholars say like the heel, the hair. That's like his uh, weak spot. Yeah, weak spot. Yeah. So then they, for three days, they could not give the answer. Ah, the translation NIV says on the fourth day. Mm. They changed it. Ah, uh, fake news. Fake news. Fake oh news. my goodness. Okay, so the way that it is, <laughs> is actually, they couldn't tell him the answer to the riddle for three days. And on the seventh day. Yeah. <laughs> hilarious. They yeah. changed it to the fourth day. <laughs> <laughs> and the way even that it's printed on the book yeah. is exactly how I read it. He couldn't tell him the, reader, the, the, the answer to the riddle for three days. Another seventh day, yeah. and then next line it continues. So it's not supposed to be yeah. read uh, in one way, yeah. just like what, like in, in at one time. Yeah. It's supposed it, to be funny. Yeah, the line here subverts expectations because they riddles for three days and on the fourth day, but here it's on the seventh day, so it's a comedic timing. Yes, it's, it's a setup and a punch. Yes, yes, and it's a release. <laughs> yes, we know we have those stories. We can we can make fun of our stories too. We can make fun of them, look, yeah. just like you do. And then again, this is funny if you read it in, the, <laughs> like in, a, in a different, in a comedic tone. The Philistines, they come to the wife of Samson and they ask her to seduce him mm -hmm. in order to find uh, the answer. And they threaten her, it just escalates, just like yeah. immediately, which kind of, for me, pokes fun of the Judah story when he wants to, yeah. to burn Tamar, just like unintentionally funny, but wow, this is... Crazy. But here, this is funny. They say, coax your husband into explaining the reason to us, or we will burn you and your father's household to death. Yeah. <laughs> this is like, whoa, 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 whoa. It's grotesque. <laughs> it's grotesque. It could be seen as grotesque. Yes. So then the woman that, she, that, that he said was Yesharabe enough, yeah. honest in his eyes, yeah. she comes to him. Oh, you hate me. You don't really love me. Oh, you've given my people a riddle, but you haven't told me the answer. And in the English version, they omit the funny part. Hatsikatehu. Yeah. She is nagging. Yeah. The She's word, yeah. nagging him. It's a word that we still use. It's a nagging wife. It's a nagging wife. Yes, it's a trope. Yeah. yeah, everybody can understand yeah. the nagging wife. In here, in this context, she's also what, the enemy or whatever, since she's conniving and he thinks she's straight in his eyes, so she is stupid. But it's a trope of, okay, okay, I will tell you. Just leave me alone. Just stop mm. nagging. And also foreshadowing. And foreshadowing. That his kryptonite is also nagging. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's also, can't handle nagging. Yeah. Okay, and then he just tells her, 
uh, I haven't even now in the English part is not it's just not a good translation. He says, uh, I haven't told my mother and father, so I will tell you. Ha ha ha. And then she cried over him for the seven days of the feast. Yeah. Laugh, so, laugh, laugh, cue yeah. laugh, because we're on the, on the seventh day already of the feast. It's the last day of, yeah. the, of the feast we were told in a moment ago. Yeah. This is not unintentionally funny. Yeah. It's too perfect. It's too perfect. And then after that, and on the seventh day. Yeah. So it's just like in three mm-hmm. uh, paragraphs, boom, boom, all goes all over. Ha <laughs> ha, we have time and problems. It's yeah. stupid. It's silly. It doesn't make any sense. Ha ha ha. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And then a cathartic event. <laughs> There's a comedy, 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 cathartic event. It's like the structure of all this uh, story. And then he tells her the answer. She tells the, the Philistines. They give the answer. And then he, whatever, says it funnily that you, you know, yeah. you messed in my backyard here. And this is why you found it. And then he ha- now he has to pay up. And this is also ridiculous. But it's like a lot of work. So he has to pay up. And this is also ridiculous. So the spirit yeah. of Yahweh is, what's the, <laughs> what's the translation? Came powerfully upon him. Okay, yeah. that works. Came yeah. powerfully upon him. He went down to Ashkelon, struck down 30 of their men. Ashkelon, that's Philistines. Yeah. So the Phil- he owes the Philistines yeah. clothes. He goes down immediately, just like that. Boom. Mm-hmm. Hits up 30 Philistines, takes their clothes, gave that <laughs> to the people who solved the riddle, and then he's fuming. Yeah. And he returns to, the, uh, to his father's home. I.e. leaving his wife. And then... She's being given <laughs> to his enemies. <laughs> to, to his friends. To his friends. Uh, this is also funny, because then he comes in, like harvest time, and he wants to come to yeah. his wife. Yeah. To have sex with her. Sex. This is also makes fun of the biblical tropes that you just yeah. like, come to your, yeah. <laughs> to your wife. This is not how these people live in Alexandria. No. They don't see a woman, uh, you know, uh, whatever, on the river, go to their uh, yeah. father and say, I want to marry this woman, go to this woman. No, this is uh, like an urban, sophisticated society. And they imagine the past and they imagine brutes. Mm-hmm. It's the same way that there's a trope here, a prehistoric man with a uh, naboot, how do you say it, with a, with a stick. Big stick. Big stick dragging a woman to his cave. Yes, so. yes, 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 exactly. So then it's funny, the father says, ah, sorry, I thought you hated her, so I gave her to somebody else, but you want maybe her younger uh, <laughs> sister is much better looking. Yeah. Funny. Yeah. And then he's so angry. Why it's him. funny? The audience recognizes it. The audience knows in its mind that it's kind of a reference to Jacob and uh, Leah. It was written in the early days even of the Simpsons show that one of its strengths, its, its shout outs to popular culture. The thing that happens inside the audience mind is kind of a dopamine release. Exactly. Oh, I know yeah. that. When you know that. Oh, yeah. you don't have and to you tell recognize. me. Yeah, yeah, I recognize it. <laughs> yeah, and you feel smart and you feel yeah. in the know. So here it looks, if you put on the glasses again, it fits. It's a trope that was supposed to be funny. So then he exacts revenge in the most ludicrous way. And then you can imagine it that it is overly ludicrous how uh, Shimshon acted out on yeah. stage. Or maybe he does something really, really silly and menial. And the narrator says that it's just incredible mm-hmm. stuff because he says he caught 300 foxes. Yeah. Okay. Very random. Very random. Tied the <laughs> their tails together. Okay. And put a fire, not fire, like a torch, a torch. in between the yeah. tails and just release them. Release like a swerving fireball into the uh, the crops. <laughs> yeah, just go and burn them. You yeah. don't need <laughs> to catch 300 foxes. And that could them up be and put it some kind of a yeah. reference that uh, was lost in time. I think the mm. judges, I think a lot of the ludicrous exploits, the way that scholars explain these like references to earlier yeah. judges that also are, but you can, but there you can see the language is ancient. Yeah. This is the language is new and perfect. It's a mythological burlesque. So there's something very magical happening. A guy taking 300 uh, foxes and uh, defeating his enemies, but it's also at the same time really grotesque. So the product here is maybe something that is lost in time. It's supposed to be funny, cathartic, sad, emotional, not at the same time, but at the same product. And then uh, the, se- the Philistines hear that uh, Samson did it uh, because his wife was given to, uh, ac- according to the NIV, his companion. Yeah, his so colleague. The, his colleague. So his the Philist- comrade. 
So the Phillies went. To, so the Philistines went up and burned her and her father to death. Yeah, hilarious. Like they said, they said, they said that they would yes. burn her and they yes. did burn her. Yeah, just like if you read it, just like in a comedic timing, this is just perfect. Yeah, perfect. and because she's not Jewish and she's a Philistine, and then it's ah. like a Philistine on Philistine crime. It's funny. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> They're very stupid, the Philistines, in this story. So then here we're going to shorten it. Okay, they go to the Judeans because they rule over mm-hmm. the Judeans and they ask the Judeans to go mm-hmm. and arrest him. Mm-hmm. And then he says, you will not hurt me, Judeans. And so now we're just going to arrest you and give you up to the Philistines. It's like, okay, because this is a new scene now. Yeah. We had the curtains closed and open, so maybe this is yeah. a little bit of a setup, like a breathing room. Mm-hmm. We can see they're artists. Yeah. So whenever there's some space or something, then the comedic uh, you know, peak yeah. will come later. It's, yeah. very, it's very smart. And then when they <laughs> when the Philistines get him, okay, here starts the ridiculous the ridiculous over grand uh, descriptions of how he detaches detaches himself from his uh, shackles shackles, and he comes to a place called Lehi. Yeah, remember the Lehi. Yeah, it's, it means cheek cheek in Hebrew Lehi. And again, the spirit of Yahweh is, comes very powerful upon him. The ropes on his arms became like charred flax, and the bindings dropped from his hands. Then, finding a fresh cheek yeah. of a donkey, they translate it as jawbone. Yeah. No, it's cheek. The same word. He finds a cheek of the chalk of, a, of, of, a, of, a, of an ass of a donkey in a place called cheek. Cheek. A fresh donkey's cheek. What's that? He finds a fresh donkey's cheek in a place called cheek. Come on. Hilarious. You find a cheek of a donkey? What the hell is that? <laughs> he takes the cheek of the, of, the, of the donkey. He hits a thousand yeah. <laughs> people. <laughs> it's like Obelix. And then he says, after he sp- uh, whatever, he makes fun of the yeah. uh, Philistine, he said, this is why I call this place Cheek Hill. Yeah. <laughs> so I came to a place called Cheek. Yeah. I found the chick. I slew a thousand men with the chick of a donkey. With the chick of a donkey. And this is why I call this Chick Hill. Chick, <laughs> chick, 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 chick Hills. Know, and you know, the it's chick a of a donkey is also like an ass chick. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is an ass. Like literally ass chick. This is Lechi Hamo. Yeah, I think. It works in English also. If you were an elite in the ancient world, especially if it's true that it's in the time of uh, the Jewish community in Alexandria, then a donkey, for you, it's a very funny animal. If you're poor and you're some kind of a farmer, a donkey, it can be funny, but it's also like, you know, it's your, uh, it's your truck, it's your whatever, it's, it's your property. Mm-hmm. It's th- one of the most prized things that you hold. But for uh, rich people, chamo, a donkey, it's funny. So the fact that also he, he was ki- called an ass, also maybe maybe they call him an ass. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the word in here when you say chamo, chamorotaim, chamo, yeah. whatever, it's it's supposed to be funny. It's like I I slew you with my sloth and with my slur <laughs> and it's uh, a it, the, the the grotesqueness in here. It's also a heroic supernatural n- supernatural thing to do, but it's also very ridiculous and grotesque yes i think we have to say something about the effort that we need to exert in order to say what in the bible is intentionally funny and unintentionally funny i think this it either says something about the power of perspective or just like the unwillingness to open ourselves to other possibilities that we didn't yeah. think about because we have to explain that this is all not unintentionally funny a thousand times perfectly crafted by accident but intentionally funny poking fun yeah. at those tropes yeah because this is inside the, the gen- bible inside yeah. the bible because this is the genre of the times like there's no reason to see it any other way i think but I'm not a scholar. There are the reasons to not see it. Uh, the yeah, fact yeah, that, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, 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 the yeah. fact that there's comedy inside of the yeah, Bible, yeah, yeah. people wrote, written a holy <laughs> text just to make fun of yeah. its own holy text. It's, uh, you know. Yeah. Cancelled. Samson's yeah. cancelled. So then there's a reference to either when, Her- when Heracles uh, was thirsty and had to drink yeah. water and the uh, water came, uh, came forth from the stone, or maybe it's also kind of a shot at uh, Moses uh, and yeah. like re- ridiculizing when they needed w- the water and it came out, of, uh, came out of the stone, and here it's just like ridiculous. Yeah, it's a large man drinking lots, 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 lots of water, and it's like, you know, 
fisting and shoving into his mouth like a, lots of like chicken wings or something like that and with really grotesque and ridiculous and in here maybe the portrayal was like he lifts a, a kind of a well and drops it uh, some kind of a rock with the uh, water inside and just uh, gobbles exactly. it down and then he throws it and this is and he names this place accordingly so this is again it makes fun of, of the naming names of the naming yeah. names you go around yeah. you do something now this is the name yeah. you go around and, oh, okay. and also the contradictory tales yes, of yes, the yes, 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 origins yes, yes. of the name sometimes Beit El is called because of that yes. sometimes it's called that Be'er Sheva, Be'er Sheva twice yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly exactly episode 16 this is the this is the height of the whole thing now we come to the crux of it yeah this is just again intentionally funny yeah, he went to Gaza so a whore one day Samson went to Gaza where he saw a prostitute he went in to, yeah. to spend the night with her no yeah. no, no, no. Yeah. it doesn't work in English <laughs> he went to Gaza saw a whore spend the night with her no came to her came to her which is uh, in the context spend the night to her and Gaza as Ashkelon are very very famous and Philistine places it's not uh, some kind of it, you don't you don't need to be an a person living in ancient times with a vast knowledge and history to know that Ashkelon equals Philistines very close Gaza equals equals Philistines yes so then they ambush him all night long and their plan is to wait until daybreak yeah and then attack him yeah. okay and they were they're sleep. stupid they're, they're Gazans stupid. and Philistines Philistines And then he only slept uh, half of the night. Ooh. And he went up and became, again, a poor man's Heracles. Yeah. Took the gate. Yeah. He just went up the mountain <laughs> <laughs> for no reason. Yeah. You just have to take the gate. You can just like, walk out yeah. or, or hit them. Just took the gate. And, and imagine them, you see them sleeping or like, whatever, near the gate, which is like the background. Yeah. He just like, takes the gate, walks yeah. off, and they yeah. wake up, and there's no gate there yeah. <laughs> anymore. It takes like a giant... Uh, door or door. something or yeah and it's also it's very extra extravagant the way it's the way it portrayed and it's also a setup then here comes the lila mm. mm-hmm. here comes the lila the night from the night from the night in aramaic and the philistines they have the same plan again but now they're not gonna threaten her with burning they're gonna try to coax mm-hmm. her with the uh, bribe her with money what they need from her is information they want to know how come he's so strong And how they can beat him so they can tie him up and imprison him. And I imagine her like having like a conniving face mm-hmm. and just like trying to hatch a plan and she comes in and her plan is, please tell me, yeah. how come you are strong and how I can defeat you and arrest you? <laughs> Super funny. Yeah. And here there's the one, two, three comedic climax. This is, there's a pattern, there's a template. Yeah. And we know this from comedy. One, two, three. Same, same. Like something exaggerated boom you break the mold mm-hmm. maybe here you can imagine him sleeping and she's coming and says please tell me how I can kill you she's Mexicalo she's uh, nagging, nagging him, yeah. exactly but she blurted the plan she blurted the plan she just said I, says, I want to kill you and then he concocts this, uh, well, this stupid story about steaks that are wet that are have not yeah. been there he could be saying it ropes. out of his sleep when ropes. you make ropes You need to dry them so if ah, meitarim, sorry yeah. it's, uh, it's uh, strings 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 that are moist <laughs> and have not been dried here is how you can yeah. kill me he can either you can imagine him maybe just acting it out exaggerating or thinking on the fly or maybe sleeping and just like saying blah, 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 because he knows that he's yeah. trying to kill him because yeah. he just said it yeah and we know that this answer is not true and then there's a template right and I was sick and became just like any other person yeah Do this and I will be sick and like any other person. Mm-hmm. So then the Philistines come over, they bring the stupid things that yeah. he said, and they tie him up, and there's someone waiting in the room, and then she screams, Plishtim Aleha Shimsho, Philistines are on you, Samson. Yeah. The Russians, the Russians, the Russians are coming. <laughs> yeah, it's, it could well maybe some kind of an ancient uh, children uh, thing to, you know. Plishtim Aleha, wake up, Plishtim Aleha. Okay. And you can imagine him waking up and... As the biblical text is describing how wonderfully strong is him, he just like cast this yeah. aside or something. But he snapped the bow strings as easily as a piece of string snaps when it comes close to a fame, yeah. to a flame. Yeah. So the secret of his strength was not discovered. And then Delilah 
what <laughs> the first thing is that I asked you, how can I kill you? Yeah. You told me, I tried it out, it okay. didn't work. So you're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> this is a problem here. You. you didn't tell me how to kill you. <laughs> It's a problem in our relationship <laughs> if it can't be, you know, the communication here is supposed <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. I asked you how to kill you and you, <laughs> you lied to me. I can't believe you lied to me. Uh, so then he tells her just another told you that you need like new uh, yeah. ropes that you haven't worked yeah. on them it has to be something elaborate okay and again the template the Khaliti Vaiti Kechad Adam and I got sick and became just like any other person and yeah. there's a guy in the room just a guy so in the there's room. a person is talking in the room sitting waiting yeah. this could be one night yeah and she is going to sleep waking up going to sleep wake up it's it could the be. same act the same act. there was curtain here and one day she came blah blah right. blah and, uh, so so then she goes she takes the special magical whatever uh, ropes she ties him up she says and he just cast them away as a string yeah. oh my god easily yeah. easily and we know that it is not that the new ropes are not good because he was already tied with new yeah. ropes uh, yeah before. so this is the second comedic beat yeah. boom now The pre-climax, the third comedic beat, okay? She tells him again, oh no, you lied to me, you lied to me. Tell me again how I can arrest you, imprison you. And then he starts to tell her the answer. And just like the way it's written. Yeah. You don't, in the template, the end of his sentence, I got sick and yeah. he came just like any, any other person, it's missing yeah. and it's immediately yeah. what she says. So if I just like act it out. It's like in the middle of the sentence. Mean, like she didn't wait for him yeah. to finish explaining how to kill him and already she's yeah. trying to kill him. Like he's saying, whatever, my brains, he put it with the machine. If you will put my machine in my brain. <laughs> 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 and he wakes up and he just like, whatever. Yeah. Carries the machine, whatever. Yeah. What it's called. The, the loom. 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 It's a loom. Oh. So this is everybody's pissing their pants now. Everybody's laughing, laughing. And again, she tells him, oh, you said that you loved me and three times. Yeah. You have lied to me. And this is also very comedic. She's nagging, like we said, it's a comedic act. For she's men. <laughs> yeah, for men. <laughs> Because she doesn't make any sense. And she's nagging. Yeah, she's <laughs> nagging and uh, she wants him to tell her how she's, she's... So it's also like a parody of the nagging woman. Like Hercules. Hercules also was betrayed by yeah. a woman. Sorry, yeah, it's also a pro-parody and whatever that you can... Uh, the men in the audience uh, and the patrons of the place uh, can... Uh, can identify and uh, uh, patreon.com biblical proportion if you want to become a member but the thing that she's asked of him is the secret to his powers <laughs> so it's kind of like very poetic that the, the naggy woman uh, just want to defeat you they want to know your secrets and uh, nag you and uh, no, 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 no. even in english it's funny she said how can you this is the niv again how can you say i love you when you won't confide in me This is the first third time yeah. you have made a fool of me and haven't told me the secret of your great strength. And then let me first read the English of it because that's also funny. With such nagging, she prodded him day after day until he was sick to death of it. Yeah. In Hebrew, it's more funny. <laughs> This is the part when I read it, when I read it this past week, just I burst out laughing. I like, oh, but that was weird. I'm reading the Bible and I'm laughing like out loud, not like... Ra- I, you know, yeah. eyebrow raising yeah. funny. Huh, this is silly. No, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what, what the fuck? She nagging him so much that he wanted to die. Yeah. He wasn't sick of it to death. <laughs> yeah. But it's enough short Lamut. He wanted to die. This is why he told her how to kill him. Yeah. This is perfect. Yeah. And then the mood changes. Yes. Comedy, 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 a cathartic emotional event. So we had three times of comedy gold. Then another kind of a comedic, uh, de- pretty much comedic that he wants to kill himself because he, he doesn't <laughs> tell the secret of how to kill <laughs> him to his wife. And uh, she uh, nags him so yeah, much yeah. that, okay, I will not tell you, kill me already. Yeah, I know how, what it is. I also have a nagging wife and I also want to kill myself when she's <laughs> nagging. <Yeah. laughs> This is why it's so funny. But now it's serious. Now, okay. It's the action part. Okay, just now, by reading. Just yeah, by reading. You don't need to laugh anymore, audience. Now you, need, you can be serious. It's some kind of a... It's like the movie Scream. The 90s movie. It is a horror movie. You won't show it to children because it is rated and categorized as a horror movie. But it has many, many comedic elements in it. Because the experience of going into the movie, it's not also 
it's a horror movie, movie so your emotions are supposed to be fear all the time no you need to relax you need to have an experience here you spend a lot of uh, you spend from your money time yeah you spend your time with us here in the movie theater and we want you to be to laugh to cry to be scared to feel smart yeah exactly and scream it's like that but there's another layer that After scream like the scary movie whatever franchise that he takes scream which is also in itself kind of a parody. comedy slasher parody it parodies the parody that parodies the parody there's an extra layers in that so what happened if people in the future your your yeah. uh, future Kazakis they Uzbekis. found the scary movie Uzbekis, sorry that was racist <laughs> they they find with in one in one uh, you know library or whatever yeah. folder they yeah. found the scary movie. The scream and others really actually scary movies yeah. only the scripts yeah. only the scripts yeah they don't see yeah. the, the movie yeah they don't see the the headshots the character with the know, music because the ex- they don't see the facial expressions and there's also music in the in the in the Greek plays that yeah. has to augment the experience I yeah. know this is a genre I don't know if this one has but I don't know I'm sure yeah. you can just pre- like make music That's yeah easy. you could have a harp and a flute the flute can be like very comedic the harp can be very relaxing and uh, getting you into the scene the same way that you have like a telenovela which is supposed to be a drama with serious issues you know I'm pregnant I'm cheating on you but there's also like kind of a ridiculous uh, characters there and when you see them the the music changes it from like it becomes like more like Tum, 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 yes. tum. so it can, could we, we can yeah. well may imagine a play that is being played with music a Greek product you can just like sense in the air the writing just like now it's different now he's telling her the secret he confides in mm-hmm. her now there's time before it was one two three yeah. punch 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 uh, and she goes to the Philistines and she tells them now you have conversations before you didn't have yeah. conversations it had to be tight yeah. now we have to prepare for what's coming they give her the money she cuts his hair mm-hmm. they uh, tie him up and he wakes up and he's like hey I'm gonna get out of this like all the times that I did before no but now she's got real and he didn't know that Yahweh was no longer with him And here it's like the Hebrew Judaic version of the Greek uh, ver- Greek very famous trope of an invincible hero with just one little mm. tiny mm-hmm. Achilles heel. <laughs> <laughs> you yes. see what I yeah. yes. So it's here it's the same, but it, Achilles is protected by, I don't remember, probably some god or whatever which said to him, uh, well, you will have blah blah blah, and your heel is there, whatever, whatever. And here it's the ver- in this version, For the Judaic mindset audience the spirit of Yahweh was no longer with him mm. now you know that uh, something yes, is uh, because he drank wine yeah. ate uh, stuff that he wasn't supposed to eat and cut off his hair yeah and when the spirit of Yahweh is no longer with you it's time to get serious yes and then no it gets serious yeah. very seriously the way they imprison him they cut out his eyes they get him, get him to Gaza they put him in shackles and he's a slave there he has to work whatever this big uh, grind, grind yeah, grinding, yeah. yeah. And who in the Greek mythology <laughs> cut his own eyes after <gasps> that the quote unquote spirit of uh, Zeus uh, went away from him yeah the pussy yeah The image of, su- of uh, bleeding eyes, it's something from Greek theater. The image of uh, it was pro- Oedipus was written, I think, in the 5th century BC or 4th century BC. So the image of people with some kind of uh, makeup, ancient makeup, like uh, maybe they crushed berries and uh, smeared it over the eyes or something like that. So it's, it's also a, a Greek image. And then after this very... intense moment he doesn't have his eyes doesn't have Yahweh he's imprisoned this is also in line with Greek comedy that has that that, that takes uh, uh, tra- uh, tra- tra- tragic mm-hmm. templates yeah. and combines them mm-hmm. together mm-hmm. <coughs> but the hair on his head began to grow again after it had been shaved yeah this is like a whisper yeah. and scene oh yeah. okay yeah. don't worry too much yeah don't worry too much yeah. now final act curtain curtain Now they describe this temple of mm-hmm. Dagon. Yeah. By the way, I just, re- you know, I'm not a scholar, just read about it. 
this is the only place or maybe there's another place in this that mentions the gon has a as a god for the philistines mm-hmm. it was supposed to be mesopotamian maybe there's a reference here that we don't understand i think maybe scholars can find it out so here the when the curtains when the curtain uh, goes away i don't know what they uh, p- goes away ah, it opens, it opens up, up. Uh, so we see a house of worship Ooh. bite bite a house of worship bite the gone of the gone like the the not Yahweh <laughs> 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 and it, uh, again here when you s- we see the word house it's a place of worship and it's it mentions there that yeah, yeah, they yeah, go yeah. to worship the gone the gone so and they're very happy and th- and here it's a place when you say boo boo ah. Ah, this is why you have two paragraphs of them being the happy. You have time to boo mm-hmm. them. Ah, that's, a good, that's very good. The description of the temple here, it's kind of accurate. accurate. Yeah, it's a Greek temple with the, the, with the pillars and the Ionic, uh, Doric, I don't know, I remember from my uh, introduction to uh, <laughs> uh, history of art. <laughs> Something like that. So they're celebrating the fallen hero that finally they got him. And it's, uh, it's a very good thought, the booing, the booing. And then they bring him over. I think, the, I think he's naked. The way it's described, they mm-hmm. use the word schok, 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 which yeah. is, uh, like has a sexual uh, connotations. And he comes in, and then I guess he tries uh, the Delilah maneuvers but just by just like asking directly <laughs> a question and just like explaining his plan outright. Samson said to the, this is uh, the verse 26, Samson said to the servant who held his hand, Put me where I can feel the pillars that support the temple so that <laughs> I may lean on them. <laughs> why would you tell him that? that uh, why would you tell him that you even know that the pillars that he would say, no, don't, this is just like divulging the plan. And then he describes how many people are, 3,000 people and more yeah. are in this temple. And then he prays to Yahweh to remember him and to avenge the Philistines. And here it's super dramatic how he holds both of the pillars It's like a whole paragraph that goes over exactly how he does it. And then he yells. And I think this is like the whole crowd mm-hmm. says with him. Tamut yeah, nafshi in plishti. Yeah. Let me die with the Philistines. In Hebrew, it works well. Tamut nafshi in plishti. It's what a Jewish jihadist uh, <laughs> say. It's like the, in yes. Judaism, there's not really a concept of martyrdom as in uh, Christianity or maybe in Islam as well. Uh, not really, but yeah. So here, when you kill yourself in order to make a terrorist attack, <laughs> that's uh, what you say. Uh, But everybody's clapping. Yeah. It is very, very dramatic. He says the words. He pushes the, the pillars. Everything falls on all of the, on all of the people. And the final uh, words in Hebrew are just like, I feel chills whenever I say them. Let's see how they are in English. Thus, he killed many more when he died than while he lived. It's too short. In Hebrew, it's, it's nicer. It's nicer. This is the cathartic moment. This is the highlight of the entire play. You su- it's supposed to give you a kind of a inspiring feeling, some kind of inspiring taste before you go home and talk about the play. Mm. It's not just laughing. mixes both and the final act is catharsis and catharsis catharsis is Greek and uh, mm. it's, it's not only Greek and it catharsis was uh, being re- people in ancient times like Aristo <laughs> already formulated uh, formulas and made science out of uh, how to write tragedies and uh, in his uh, book uh, poet poem poetry or whatever Aristo has a chapter on comedies one of those chapters is lost in time And it say, Ariso says that comedies are like they get the grotesque, the lower qualities of the human beings and exaggerate ah. them as opposed to tragedies when they take the higher qualities of the human beings and then exaggerate them. Exaggerate them. So here the stupidity, the connivingness. Yeah. And catharsis is more associated with the tragedy. But, it but is here it's a, catharsis is something that it's like, you know, it's, it's basic stuff when you want to your audience to be cathartic even till today. If you, if you don't want your audience to be cathartic, then you subvert the, uh, the medium yeah, and you right. do some Arctic, Bartic stuff yes. to the el- arti- artistic yeah. elite, the Bohemia. Yeah, yeah. And it's But for the comment. people, you want catharsis. For the, the people want catharsis. Yeah. So here now, after the, so the curtain closed. And here, after Hercules did something along the lines of that uh, in a temple, killed himself, other people. 
Then his soul went up to the heavens to join his father, mm. Zeus. Here, then his brothers and his father's whole family went down to get him. Down. Down. They brought him back up and buried him between Tzorah and Eshtaol in the tomb of Manoah, his father. Mm-hmm. Boom. This is the exact reference, and this is like, okay, he's not left dead here. He's in the tomb of his father. This is, you know, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Yeah. They're all there. Curtain, clap. Clap. And standing now, ovation. Standing ovation, because yeah. you also laughed so hard, but at the end, you're so emotional. Yeah. It's so many yeah. emotions. Your tummy worked overtime. Overtime. Because they laughed. They cried. They had cramps in their stomach wow. all the time. So wow. the experience after, I don't know, maybe it was a one-hour play, two-hour play, half an hour play yeah you could do it different ways yeah the experience was an emotional experience the writers the writer the play writers know their audience and they had something special prepared for them. okay okay so let's uh let's put this in context if this is true and we are not scholars but i say that i acted it out people acted it out to me People can act this out tomorrow on the street without changing any word. Hence, it's a play. You can say that it's not a play, but if I can do it, read it word for word as a play, then for me, it's a play. Yeah, if you take the first uh, Genesis story and try to make it as a play, or the second Genesis story, try no. to make it a, as a play, no. uh, it could work, but no, not exactly. But not word for word, every single time, yeah. in all the acts. Yeah. Uh, no, it's, it's just... You can take Harry Potter and just like, read it in a different way and it will become a perfect different yeah. story unbeknownst to man. No, this is not the way I'm writing. It just works. Yeah. So assuming this is true, this means that, again, uh, story lampooning mm-hmm. the Bible along the lines of Greek uh, comedy with mm-hmm. its tragic elements and with all the tropes and with all the acts and with all the everything has been hiding in the Bible, translated to all of the languages, Christians, Muslims, I don't know what yeah. to say. This is insane. Yeah. Let me go a little bit over my notes about Greek comedy, about the genre. Okay. The plot of comedies usually stretches reality in terms of time and place, jumping incredible geographic distances and rapidly changing scenes. Fantastical elements, a roller coaster ride of satire, parody, puns, exaggeration, colorful language, and crude jokes. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's popular entertainment. There are not a lot of surviving f- surviving full plays of this genre mm-hmm. this is full full yeah. the only thing you have to omit is the first verse and the middle verses of the template like that he's a judge and he judged this and yeah. he did the eyes and behind the bad of Yahweh just yeah. like this is clear everybody knows that there are later additions because this is the template of the whole book they're yeah. in if you put them if you put Samson in another book then you give him a, d- a different template yeah we have to remember this is all scrolls put up together f- in a process that went like a thousand years since the destruction of the first temple through the first real codex that it's like the Hebrew Bible as we know it right now it's in the ele- it's in the 11th century AD it's like one ha- once it's like 1500 years later fast moving dialogue suspense and also attention to private do- domestic dramas this is a new comedy i think this is w- maybe when it started you see the husband and wife and all that like yeah. uh, run of the mill people yeah, and not have great men yes you also have like the great men but with regular problems yeah, with yeah. exactly like a nagging wife <laughs> <laughs> okay so omri please sum things up for us put on your comedic glasses and read that story start with judges 16 yeah judges 16 and uh, you will the the story of samson and delilah that is a love story of betrayal and and don't marry maybe don't marry uh, goy uh, shikses if you put on the comedic comedic glasses and you imagine like a comedian writing it then it's speaking uh, it speaking it and acting narrating it. it then you will see that it comes together. It's, it's not just silly unintentionally. It's supposed to be funny and it's supposed to be par- parodic. And I think this is awesome. <laughs> so please, if you are uh, a scholar uh, in the, you know, you speak Hebrew and you are you expertise in the Greek uh, theater. Yeah, please tell, us, tell us we are wrong. Tell us we are wrong. Look it up. Find all the things that you think work or don't work. If you are an expert in the Alexandrian Jewry Hebrewry, this could be gold if this is true. Yeah. 
and uh, we encourage people to scrutinize to support it. us on Patreon. Ah, no, sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Also, <laughs> patreon.com yes. slash uh, biblical proportions. Yeah. yeah, if you think this is good content, yeah. what we just did, uh, this is worthwhile content, yeah. then patreon.com slash biblical proportions. And also, if this is the first episode of ours that you listen to, if for somehow this has gone beyond our regular audience, yeah. then it check would, out yeah go back go back catalog. it's yeah. better to just go binge it yeah. will be will end the genesis soon and it's it's the payoff yeah is greater the payoff is greater and also we have stuff that is i think just as strong coming up in the next few episodes don't jinx it so thank you everybody for tuning in if this is your first time be sure to follow us we can continue the conversation on our reddit page it's ancient world stories subreddit ancient world stories yeah. if you want to send us a note go to our website podcast of biblical proportions.com scroll down hit us up tell a friend in social media about how the samson story is actually the life of brian hope to see you on our patreon page bye everybody bye